I want to turn to now, you've written many other books. Uh, you've translated a number of works. Uh, you've written a number of novels, uh, collection of sh at least one collection of short stories that I know of. Um, why don't you talk a little about that? It's because that's, in many ways, you're the writer here. Uh, and what's your experience of writing, both as a translator and both as a, as a fiction writer? Well, thank you, Pramit, for bringing that up because, uh, you know, I'm not one of those people who came out with a big novel at the age 22, got a three-book three deal, uh, became a film, and uh, lived happily ever after, you know. I started life as a journalist, uh, as a, even when I was uh, uh, studying to be a diplomat, I was a university level correspondent and I, I, I always wanted to write. So I wrote features, I wrote travel pieces. I started with book reviews as my literary sort of literary uh, visiting card. And then I started writing short stories and I had no idea where to get a short story published. Those were pre-internet days, 80s in communist Poland. I was sitting there with an old typewriter and tapping out a short story and didn't know where to send it. Uh, and finally I found, I used to listen to BBC shortwave very regularly and suddenly something came on the BBC shortwave that please uh, we have the BBC short story that runs out of BBC Wales. So, and they gave the address and I took this short story and I posted it to this address in, in Wales. And uh, lo and behold, they sent me a contract and uh, 30 pounds. Uh, so I said, this is good. And uh, I, I sent the short story, but that was a one-off. And then I, I, I went off to London on some other occasion and I had three short stories. And I kept going to agents and saying, can I do you a collection on short stories? And they were very polite and kind, but they said, sorry, you know, three short stories doesn't make a book. So why don't you just send it off to this address? And they gave me an address of a man called Alan Ross, who used to run something called the London Magazine, which has actually been in existence for about 200 years. It's gone through different avatars, but he ran it for about 20, 30 years. He was a great India file. He had been, I think, born in India. He was a poet. He was a cricket commentator for The Observer for 20 years. Uh, I sent him the three stories and I left London. And he sent me a little postcard in his scrawl, which I was to recognize very well after that, on a, one of these museum postcards. And he said, if you have no uh, serious plans for these, can I keep all three? So he kept all three, published them over the years. BBC broadcast several of my short stories uh, over the next four or five years. And I finally thought I would have a short story collection. But every Indian publisher said, oh, very nice, very nice, but can't you do a novel? Uh, so then I, I actually said, okay, I'll do a novel because I said so much of that is coming out is trash. Uh, so I, I actually sat down in my old word processor and started my file, which was called Trash. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to write Trash. So I wrote Trash, became Trash Rev 1, Trash Rev 2, Trash Final. It got published as a, as a book which I wouldn't call Trash. It's called We Weren't Lovers Like That. It was a book published by Penguin in 2003. Uh, and that was my first novel. And then after that, I wrote a bigger novel for Penguin, which was called The Exile, which is on the, on, based on the life of Maharaja Dalip Singh, who was the last boy king of the Sikh kingdom, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's youngest son. And he was exiled to England. He was converted to Christianity. He lost the Kohinoor to the British. And it was a very tragic tale and, and a tale of his uh, trying to fight back. So I researched it and wrote it over seven, eight years. That book took me a long time. I did some translations. I did the Zafar Nama, which is Guru Gobind Singh's letter in Persian poetry to Aurangzeb. I did a translation of partition stories of my father called Savage Harvest. Uh, he used to write in Punjabi. Uh, I did a, you talked of Israel. I did a book on Israel called Indians at Herod's Gate, which actually for the first time, I think we've traced 
the Indian connection to Jerusalem. And it's not a Jewish connection, it's a Muslim connection. Right. The so in the hospice, there is an Indian hospice behind Herod's Gate in the old city of Jerusalem. And those of you who are planning to visit Jerusalem, you must go and stay there. In the present state in which the government has actually helped to repair it, you have about 25 people can stay there in relative comfort in very romantic uh, circumstances, uh, situations. So I traced that was hospice was started at the time when Baba Farid, the mm -hmm. Sufi saint from Punjab, visited Jerusalem. So I researched that, and so that is my travel history narrative, Indians at Herod's Gate. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. about nine books, uh, one way or the other, and the short story collection which you mentioned, it's called Winter Evenings. Finally, all those short stories which were <laughs> published in different places and some unpublished ones were brought out together uh, in uh, 2012, yeah. Including the one you won 30 pounds for? Including, it was called very, you see the ambition of a young man. I titled my first story, The Masterpiece. <laughs> um, 